Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. I recently created a video titled Introduction to Enums in Swift, and I'll leave a link in the notes below. In that video, I go through a basic introduction to creating and using enums in Swift, and in this video and others to come, I want to basically refactor and enhance a Swift UI project to take advantage of the power of enums. If this is something you want to see, then keep watching. Here's my starter project, and you can download it from the link provided in the notes below. It's pretty basic. It has a segmented picker along with a button. Tapping on the button presents a modal sheet. As it stands now, selecting an option from the segmented control does nothing. When I tap on Show Modal, I get the same modal view each time because I only have one. In Swift UI, it's not possible to have more than one dot sheet modifier associated with the same is presented state variable. The picker assigns the value of the tag to the option selected state variable, but that is all it does in this project right now. What we can do to resolve this is use an if else statement block to show a different view depending on the value of option selected. So let's set that block up now. And because we're in a closure, we have to use self to access the option selected. If the value is 1, we'll present this text modal that we already have. Else if the value is 2, I'm going to present a red color view. And I'll extend it to all edges. Else if the option is 3, I'll present an image that's just a system image of a raised hand set to the size of a large title. Testing this, we see that it works as expected. The problem with this is that our code is not particularly readable, nor is it that maintainable. So instead of using an integer, I'm going to use an enum and that enum will represent the different view options. So within our content view, I'll create an enum named my option with three cases, text, color, and image. And now we can change option selected from an integer type to be of type my option with a default value of dot text. The tags are no longer integers, but rather a case of my option. So let's fix that now. So one is my option.text, two is my option.color, and three is my option.image. And when I present the sheet, we change the option selected to be the enum value instead of the integer. Dot text for the first dot color for the second, and dot image for the third. This is somewhat more readable, and when I resume our canvas, we see it works as before. You may have wondered why I didn't use a switch statement in our sheet body. Well, it turns out in Swift 5.2 and earlier, which is what I'm using right now in this video, the view builder doesn't support switch statements. I understand, however, that this will change in Swift 5.3. Speaking of View Builder, one of the problems with this sheet is that our sheet is localized to this body, and perhaps I'd like to present these same views in another view, or in a navigation link. In that case, I want to extract this if-else block to a function. So let's start the function here. First, we'll start by creating the function called Option View that returns some view. What this is saying is that we want to return some view, so why not copy and paste in the if-else stuff from above into this function and return each view like this. This raises an error, however. Function declares an opaque return type, but the return statement in its body do not have matching underlying types. This means that the views returning are not of the same type. One's text, one's a color view, and the other one's an image view. 
The solution is to decorate the function with at view builder and remove the returns. Also, we don't need self because we are no longer within a closure. Now all we have to do is replace the content of our sheet with just self.optionView. It's always good to test, so let's resume our canvas and as you see, things are working as designed. There's actually one more thing that we can do here to tidy it up a bit. Let's take out the dot sheet and start again, but this time leave the content keyword in. The binding is still the same, but our content is just the closure that has no parameter and returns a view. Well, this is simply option view. I think that this is a bit more descriptive, don't you? The sheet is presented when is showing modal is true and the content is whatever is in option view. Now, it'd be nice if we could use a switch statement here to make this even more readable. But as I mentioned above, the function's a view builder, and in the view builder, we're stuck with the if else block. There is an alternative, however, and that's to use any view instead of some view. There has been much discussion that any view brings in serious performance implications to the Swift UI render engine, due to the fact that it erases the type of the underlying view hierarchy thus slowing down the diffing. However, for simple cases like this, it's worth considering. The first thing I'm going to do is comment out the body, and I'm going to remove the view builder decorator. And instead of returning some view, I'm going to return any view. Now we can use the switch block. And what I like about this is that we now get an Xcode helper that can enter all of our cases for us. And for each case, we can return the same view that we had in our if-then-else block. This gives us another error, though, because instead of returning some view, we're returning different views, and Xcode can't convert. The solution is to wrap the view in any view and return that any view. So we can do this with multiple cursors very easily. I like this a lot more, and as you see now, it works as before. But as I said, some say that there might be a performance hit depending, I guess, on the complexity of your views. Now there's one more thing. I'm not particularly happy with my picker, as it too is a bit verbose. We're creating three text views that have a similar pattern. Each is a text view with a tag modifier that happens to be one of the enum cases. This is right for using for each if we could only loop over each of our my option enums. Well, in fact, we can. All we have to do is make my option conform to case iterable. And if we want to be able to use the string equivalent of our cases, we can make the enum a string so we can use the raw value property. Now we can modify the picker as follows. The selection and label are still the same, but for the content, we can use a for each loop that loops through all cases of my option using self as the unique ID. Then the text is just our options raw value and the tag being the option. Testing it, it still works. We can clean it up even more by adding the modifier dot capitalized to our raw value. This makes it much easier now to add additional views. For example, let's say we wanted a circle. All we need to do is add one more case, circle. This triggers an error in our option view because our switch statement is no longer exhaustive. So we'll let Xcode fix it for us and we'll return our new any view that will be a circle filled with a blue color.
Well, that was easy. Now, one final thing I want to do is move the enum and the option view out of our content view. So let me create a new file called other views. And inside that file, we'll import Swift UI. I'll also create an enum here that I'll just use as a namespace. I'll call it other views and I'll paste my enum into it. This will allow me to easily reference the enum via the other views namespace. And while we're here, let's separate out the cases and provide an even better raw string value for each case. Back in content view, I'll cut our function and switch back and paste it into our namespace, but I'll make it a static function. This generates an issue, however, since we don't know what option select it is. Well, we can pass that in from our content view when we call this function. So all we need is an argument option selected, which is of type my option. Now I can go back to content view where our view is now broken and say that option selected is now an other view dot my option. In our for each loop, we need to add other views to access the my option enum. And finally, when presenting our sheet, we can try the same by adding other views to access the option view function and pass in the option selected. Unfortunately, this gives us an error. The good news is that we can use the alternate way presenting our sheet by entering our call into the function in the full closure block. So let's repeat dot sheet and remove the content. And then we can use other views dot option view, passing in option selected of self dot option selected. Testing one more time, we see it works. Our content view is now much cleaner and much more readable and easier to maintain. Plus, we have the benefit of now using our other views in any other view we want because we have separated out into our other views namespace. Look for more videos like this in the future that will try and showcase the power of enums. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.